Now, Local 22 Sports with Lauren Walsh. Welcome to High School Huddle and welcome to Week 2, where the training wheels come off, the critics start to chime in, and win streaks are built. But at the end of each game, every Lake Monster goes to an actual home. They made it like a scholarship sport. This is the Carlos household. This may seem obvious, but in sports, the goal is to win. And in soccer, the goal is to score goals. The U.S. women's national team did both of those things in their opening game against Thailand. The Duncans are just the fifth trio of brothers to play together on the same Division I basketball team in the same season. And while the competition between them is fierce, they appreciate and acknowledge how special it is for all three of them to play together this season. We can finally say baseball is back in Burlington. The Lake Monsters opening night here at Centennial Field. Lydia got the idea from this jersey. She was inspired by the U.S. Women's National Team and their fight for equal pay as they played in the Women's World Cup this summer. She turned it into this jersey. As this play developed, a coach yelled, he's a lefty. And Jake Schaefer says, yes, I am. Chalk up another for CVU, it's 2-0. Yeah, we're talking about the first 25-cent hot dog night of the season. I hope you've eaten dinner. Fair warning, there is hot dog video coming up. After the break, hot dog hysteria from Centennial and some Lake Monsters highlights too. And the Seminoles' size and length proved to be too much for the Catamounts as Florida State ended UVM season 76-69 in the first round and ended Ernie Duncan's career as a catamount. So the Sox go to their trusty ace, Chris Sale, his second start of the season. And before you can say Saber metrics, Matt Chapman crushes a solo home run. I was going to say, if we switch sides, I suppose that would that automatically would make you the She's sports person drum up and snow me the weather stories. person. Don't do it. I think it would. Yeah, let's do it. All right. You'll have to tune in on <laughs> Local 22 at 11. See I if mean, there's no switch. chance of this happening today. But Thanks maybe for joining us. Point. We'll see you tomorrow night. If you look at the Lake Monsters roster, you'll see players who come from all different states and even countries. So where do these players stay when they uproot their lives and move to Vermont? That is where host families come in. Here's an inside look at the host family experience. When you play 76 baseball games in one summer, the ballpark can start to feel like home. But at the end of each game, every Lake Monster goes to an actual home. They made it like a scholarship sport. Yeah. Like this yeah. is the Carlos household. It's 11 p.m. and it's dinner time. I love to cook. This summer, Tracy and Vince Carlos host Lake Monsters Logan Davidson and Dustin Harris. Tonight's spread is something out of a cookbook. Ribs, baked potatoes, and corn. And this is pretty much every night occurrence. The nightly feasts are just one part of living in the Carlos home. I mean, it's been everything that I could imagine. I mean, and plus more. I mean, it's been an awesome experience here to be able to have Trace and Vince as host parents. They're, they're like my actual parents. They take care of us very well. It's been awesome. It feels like home, really. Once everyone's plate is full, they say grace with the entire family in attendance. Mm. And then dig in a ritual lasting 20 years of hosting players. We have this large home and our kids now are gone and we have the place to give a home to these young men. Um, we changed our rules a little bit, emphasizing the, the wanting to have dinner together and wanting to get to know you, have a safe place and we look forward to it. The players look forward to second plates and bragging about the food to old roommates. You guys are missing out. What are y'all having tonight? Just, just let me know. Yeah, no big deal. Get the treats behind you too. And speaking of dessert, homemade cheesecake is up next. This one's pretty big. They're going to kill me. But the sweetest thing is the way the players and host family bond over the summer. These guys are great. And it's just nice to be a part of their life, you know, for a moment. Oh, hey, Tracy. Hi. <laughs> hey. How's it going? Oh, gosh. <laughs> you goofy. What a nice night. Each player truly becomes part of the family. Ooh, a little family interview. <laughs> and many of them still have a little place in their old summer home. Being able to come home to what is a home, mm -hmm. um, and you know they make sure we know it's that we treat it like our home as well, and uh, they treat us like their like their kids. I've only met one of them, but I can I can definitely yeah. tell they treat us like we're their kids. Um, it's truly it's truly awesome. Yeah, we're really spoiled with them. And that's just the way the Carlos family likes it keeps our house very warm and I think and, and comfortable and um, I don't know if we know what to do without that. Reporting in Essex, I'm Lauren Walsh.
At a hockey game, intermission is usually a time when fans bolt out of their seats. But the end of a period at Kreitzberg Arena <laughs> means the show is just getting started. And everybody has 15 minutes of fame, but it happens to me three times a game. Daniel Booth has had many jobs in his life, but one thing has always remained constant. I've managed to perform in this one way or another, no matter what I was doing. Now he's performing on a very unique stage. Daniel drives the Zamboni at Norwich Hockey Game. <laughs> and his resume has nothing to do with hockey. First I was in civil engineering, then I went to education, and I taught math. I was accepted at Juilliard for dance, and then you know did things like Santa Claus and Macy's. And I performed in the streets a little bit, and then from there I went over to Europe and worked in the operas in Rome. Daniel is a local celebrity at Kreitzberg. When he drives by, smiles and laughter are a near guarantee. <laughs> His quest for fun has brought him all around the world, but he came to Norwich for a simple reason. It was close by and they were advertising for someone to come and drive, and I thought that'd be fun to do. He came to Vermont for a totally different reason. My mother was sick with cancer, so I thought, well, I'll come back, I'm gonna come back, be closer to her. His mother passed away a month after he moved up to Vermont, and through it all, Daniel is still a bright light of positivity wherever he goes. She was like that. We were all, I mean, she was, she was very much like that. And, and so cancer was something that she was, had to deal with, but um, she was very active until that actually happened. And, and then we all moved on and, and we do, you know. And his vibrant outlook on life. Camera, look at the camera. <laughs> has not wavered. I just, I enjoy people. I like the next door, if it's interesting. And then, then I get to do something else. And so I've had a lot of careers. He's actually had more than a dozen different jobs. But he's been the Norwich Zamboni driver for 14 years now. This evolved to where it's home. It really is home. Daniel's home has always been the stage. And it still is. This one is just a little colder.